hello everyone and welcome back in this video on our timer service uh, tutorial series we are going to be taking a look at how we can actually schedule some job we have one job that we created and we would like to schedule it and we would like to see it executed so let's take a look at how we can do that we want to create a method that's uh, capable of scheduling that job and we want to see um, yeah how it looks like Let's just start with creating the method first. We can actually do it here. Uh, let's uh, create a method for scheduling and uh, let's see what we can, are going to pass in. So I'm going to implement it immediately and then we are going to go together to it uh, to explain what exactly we are doing there. And here it is, as I said, quite simple. We have a schedule method and we are passing into uh, the method, the class. So it's the job class. And again, I forgot to give it the correct name. Let's rename it to job class. And with the job class, we are also passing in the timer info. So all of the information about the timer that we want to create. With that, we are calling our uh, two util classes, uh, util methods which we are using to create the job details and our trigger. So these are the methods that we saw in the previous video. And with that, we are just using the scheduler class to schedule a job. And that should be it. Uh, basically, we are already capable of scheduling some job. So let's create another service from which we are going to call this. Uh, let's create that actually in a new package. Let's call it uh, something like playground and let's just do it inside all of the playground stuff let's do it inside so whatever we are adding here uh, is not directly related to the timer so it's just using our timer stuff so uh, here we are going to use um, some different things so let's take a look at how this is going to look like okay so here we have our playground service inside of the playground package that we just created. We annotated it with add service so that Spring is knows what it is. And we have added the scheduler service to the constructor. We can actually make this final. And so we are injecting the scheduler service. So where all of our fancy scheduling stuff is. And now we have an empty method called run hello world job where we want to run our hello world job that we created inside of the um, so in one of the first videos, this job is just printing the hello world to the console. So let's see how we can actually do that. As you can know, we can uh, call the schedule from the scheduler service to actually schedule a job. And here it is. So we are scheduling the hello world job. So we are passing in the class name and now we need some timer info. So let's build that. Okay, so we have created it. We have our run hello world job method where we create some uh, timer info and we are scheduling the hello world uh, job. But we are still not triggering this from anywhere. So let's create a controller which we can uh, then use to trigger this job. Okay, so here we have created a playground controller inside of the playground package. We have injected the service, the playground service, and we have created a post mapping, so uh, an endpoint which takes in the post uh, HTTP request to trigger the running of the hello world job. So let's uh, open up something um, that can trigger post requests. In my case, it will be just postman. And uh, let's trigger this job and see how it goes. And here, as you can see, I have my postman opened. If you don't know what it is, it's just an application that allows us to send different uh, kinds of HTTP requests. And uh, here I am saying that I want to trigger a post request because we have post mapping here and I'm giving it the endpoint uh, to which to run. And of course, you don't have to use Postman, you can use anything that you want. 
um, it doesn't really matter. You can uh, even uh, not trigger this via the, um, the endpoints. You can do it directly in the service. You can add it to the post construct method or something like that. You can do it basically however you want. So let's start our application. You can go here to the Spring Boot application where we have the timer application and just click run or you can click here uh, on this uh, play button. And then we should be able to see something. So we are starting the application for the first time. We can see that the Tomcat had started on the port 8080 by default. So I didn't change any settings. And we can see that the scheduler is being initialized and it's being started. And yeah, here we can see that it's being started, but no jobs are running or anything. So we go to the postman. And if we run this, hopefully our timer should start. So I've sent a request and here we can see that uh, we have our hello world job running. We said that we want it five times and in the some interval, I forgot what it was. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, we go back to the playground service. Ah, okay, so it's two seconds. So 2000 milliseconds is, is two seconds. We want it five times and with an offset of second. And here you can see we have uh, hello world one, two, three, four, five times. It's being printed. That's uh, being done here in the hello world job. We are just logging the hello world. And of course we are doing it in the interval of two seconds. So eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. You can see that it's um, every two seconds. And yeah, it looks like our timer is running. It's really doing everything that we expect it to do. And it really looks like, yeah, what we wanted to do. But one thing that we uh, are missing is this data. So the callback data. If you go to the playground service, you can see that the we are setting the callback data, but we are not using it basically anywhere. We can do that in our hello world job. Instead of just printing hello world hard coded here, we can get the callback data that we are passing in. We can get that from the context. So let's see how we can do that. And here it is. As you can see, it's quite simple with the context, with the job execution context, we have the job details, which contains the job data map. And inside of the job data map, you may remember that we stored the hello world uh, simple name. So that was our key. We stored this timer info and in the info, we have the callback data. So all of that was stored in our uh, util class here in when we were building the job details, we said, yeah, we are going to create this job data map and the key will be the class of the job and the info is the data that we want to store. And then when we built the job that was inside and when we are scheduling the job, we are uh, building that everything together and everything should be inside. So in our hello world, we should be able to extract that and use it. Let's restart our application. So we are going to stop it and rerun it. And once we do that, um, everything scheduler related should be restarted because we are using this RAM job store. We are going to be talking about different job stores uh, later on. So this is the default one. So again, we are going to go to Postman and we're going to send a request. And now we should not see the hello world. We should see my callback data because that's exactly what we are passing in. As you can see, everything works perfectly. It's really nice. And hopefully you were able to follow this through and everything is clear. So if you have any questions regarding this, if something is unclear, uh, just uh, contact me directly either in comments or via email or however you prefer. And then we can uh, talk about it if something is unclear. Hopefully this is uh, something that you can use in one of your applications that you're building. And in the next videos, we are going to extend it even more. So maybe you already noticed that in the controller, we could have passed in some parameters here to extend this job and have something a bit more fancy. So we're going to do that in uh, different videos. We're going to take a look at the different configurations that uh, Quartz has, like uh, different uh, job stores and stuff like that. So all of that fancy stuff. For now, just take a look at this and hopefully it helps you out. So I will see you in the next videos.